Hi right, guys, it's Thursday the 6th of June, uh, just gone half seven here in London. Um, Theresa May stepping down tomorrow. Uh, this man on my right uh, taking the, the seat today for the ECB meeting and press conference. Uh, we'll have a look over, uh, well we'll look uh, head to that, what to look out for. And we'll have a quick look over the markets from yesterday, how we're trading uh, as well. Uh, obviously some decent reactions over the last couple of days, most notably with the, the dollar where we've seen some weakness and then we saw some strength yesterday. Stock market's still higher, but as you uh, will see slightly this morning, they're just coming under a touch of, of pressure uh, now to their lower points of the day. Uh, the DAX here, uh, obviously ahead of the ECB, likely to be a bit more subdued, but just coming under uh, a touch of pressure. Uh, as well, the same can be said for the S&P and the Nasdaq, which uh, fought off um, the, the gap closed to push on before coming back lower. Uh, yesterday, we saw the Mexican peso push higher in the, the early part of the afternoon. If I can just circle this here uh, on the idea of Navarro coming out and saying there was going to be uh, a deal reached, if you like. But you can see this market gapping lower overnight uh, as they are far from that deal. Uh, so one to keep an eye out for uh, today, you can see that, that peso under a series of pressure really from the beginning of the uh, the week, you can see the big, big well, for the 31st I should say, big gap down, bit of a recovery yesterday, short lived and then the gap lower uh, as well. Uh, unfortunately for any Mexican peso traders, hopefully you weren't holding a position overnight uh, there, as you can see, that gap lower, quite significant. We we'll also take a look, of, obviously, at the uh, the euro ahead of this meeting. We're on a quite a key level. If I just bring over this uh, area from the left hand side, the previous high uh, back on the 24th and 27th, I'll be keeping a close eye on that this morning. Whether we can have a, a decent reaction either way before that meeting, uh, I wouldn't be too sure. Uh, yesterday as well, one of the, the bigger movers uh, in the market, oil, you can see, if, especially if we lower this time frame down from the DOE numbers uh, pushing down to the lowest point of the year. Those numbers, you can see here, if I just transition my chart, coming in uh, as a build for, for everything, 6.7 million, uh, obviously more than expected. API gave the signal uh, on Tuesday evening that there was going to uh, be a build but not as big as was expected and price did come under uh, a bit of pressure and even late last night where we had a bit of a recovery the S1 previous low of the day has acted as a, a quite good level uh, of resistance there. Just having a look at oil on that longer term chart so in the in the weekly strategy let me just remove all of these studies you can see we were talking about the importance of this this level in general and call it a zone really from the uh, the lows that we had back in February and January uh, of this uh, of this year. Uh, we have now had a go at trying to break through uh, to the downside, closing below these, these key levels. Uh, so I'll just be keeping an eye, uh, especially where we close the week. Is it going to be an opportunity to get long uh, and we start to see a reversal uh, or is this just the start of a further push down? From the top of the year to the low, uh, 24, nearly 25% move to the downside. So big, uh, big push there. Also yesterday, and, and this was a, uh, well, if I told you looking at this chart with Euro dollar on the low of, well, today and yesterday, that ADP was the worst number in nine years, well, you would think this chart is upside down. Uh, that number coming in a lot less than expected. 180,000 was expected and uh, a miss of nearly 160, 150,000 on that. Uh, it took a while, it did take a while to, to push on and this gave the opportunity for, for people to get in and, and what a great trade it was. Uh, around 115, the usual uh, release for that, we pushed higher uh, and since then, uh, well since then it's just drifted down from the R2. We did have some other figures out. Uh, and I suppose as we come into the, the ECB meeting, understandably it's under uh, a bit more cautious approach, but a good opportunity nonetheless. Uh, that number you can see here uh, on the trading economics, 27,000. Uh, when this, this figure came out, Piers was, was doing some work next door and 
he, he came running across and he goes, you know, this is a bad number. This is the, the worst for at least 10 years. And I, I got the, the chart up and put in five years and okay, yeah, so it's definitely not 10 years going back. And you can see, well, this is the, you know, the lowest number we've had since 2010 when we had negative uh, readings. So really bad number here. Um, and you know you have analysts, some analysts over overnight and yesterday suggesting well now you're starting to see the the impact of the trade wars and the and the global slowdown really coming to to play mm -hmm. here. It would obviously uh, be prudent to you know use this as a, as a guide for for non-farm payrolls, which is expected to to come in at a similar number. Uh, so knowing the ADP is is missed by so much, you know you will have a bad number half priced in. On Friday off that headline but as we know uh, certainly over the last couple of years or so uh, on the non-farm payroll day it's all about the the hourly earnings uh, for that just having a look uh, at the, the Fed probability for rate cuts now this was again something that I, I, it took me by surprise I was uh, uh, coming back we had a, a seminar here last night for the students that come in over the summer for, for the internship program and I was just doing a, a bit of research before uh, I was going on to talk and there was an article just posted from the FT not this one that you see on my right but the one I'm going to show you and uh, this was effectively this time yesterday where you've got the, the probabilities of, of rate cuts and you can see June you know I guess you can call that 10% July uh, between 40 and, and, and well 50% and then after that ADP reading we really have now priced in, I mean, a 63% chance, I think it's 63, let me just get that figure exactly right for you, yeah, 63% chance that uh, there's going to be at least three rate cuts in 2019. I was saying this to, to Charlie, uh, the stage one uh, mentor here as well, and I mean, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't quite believe that's what the market necessarily priced in and, and for itself and I would be surprised myself if we were to have free cuts uh, for now but quite interesting to see just from that ADP uh, number you now you have this growing sense of concern for sure uh, that on Wall Street and, and also uh, here that the US economy is facing stronger headwinds uh, just as a trade war between America and China is has stalled as has hotted up so non-farm payrolls it, I, I would usually certainly in the last couple of years have said it's uh it's a, it's a much about nothing but it, it could be quite an interesting one you know if we were to have a, a really bad number where well, the fed are gonna gonna look to act and, and just having a look at um the the countdown the the fed watch tool so for june 28 percent chance of uh, of a cut as we go into july you've got that i mean it's it's going to happen by the looks of this 72 percent chance of a, a rate cut in in july so these uh figures worth keeping an eye on if you if you you know haven't used this this tool before it's, it's definitely useful so i'll just pop that into into the chat just to get an idea of what the the market is is pricing in and uh, and what to expect but you can see just from this chart here on um on the financial times just the probability of those free cuts just the way that's really pushed on and and that adp number being so weak i mean just look at that incredible incredible and it was a shock to the market i mean the one of the biggest shocks yesterday was just how long it took for the dollar to weaken i mean here we've got the i'll put this on to well maybe even a minute chart i'm gonna have to scroll back so give me a bit of time so you can see, yes, we had the, the push, but I mean, this initial algo spike, if you like, was only 68, uh, 14 ticks. And for the worst reading since 2010, you know, then the, we came back lower before pushing on. I mean, obviously, like I said, it was a great opportunity. Um, it would have been a bit confusing at first to, to have seen it stalled, but decent push higher nonetheless, eyes on non-farm payrolls. And if we have a look at the, the dollar recently, uh, over the last, well, I mean, you can argue first, you know, two Thursdays ago on the on the euro dollar, but we've we've had the dovish comments from Powell. We've had uh, the dollar weakening elsewhere, you know, affecting gold prices, pushing on and on. You can see that recovery, um, you know, of this this push higher yesterday in gold. We did come back lower when we had some dollar strength. So, you know, the market is still susceptible. Uh, well, gold, I should say, is still susceptible to some strength of, of the dollar. So, you know, really, you know, surprising 
maybe if, if non-farm payoffs have come out really good, you know, good opportunity to to get short uh, goal. But like I was saying, we've had these dovish comments from from Powell, and this has led to some weakness, definitely uh, in the dollar, and the euro dollar has pushed higher uh, in turn, which makes this ECB uh, meeting uh, quite interesting. So I, I, you've got the uh, the. The, the picture of, of Draghi here and he's ever the professional usually the the press conferences are well I guess pretty boring but I, you know that's probably what he wants he, you know doesn't want to give too much away but certainly looking at uh, just doing the research this morning and we sent out a, a good um, a good article by uh, not article sort of research material from from Ranscourt that they did so that should be in your inboxes if anyone didn't get that do uh, let me know but certainly uh, looking at uh, this this meeting, I think it's it's got the opportunity for certainly to the downside anyway, just due to the fact that the the, the euro dollar has pushed higher, that we could effectively correct if you like, or we've now got quite a bit of room to come lower. Uh, since the last meeting, uh, eurozone growth has improved uh, to 0.4 from that 0.2, so this is obviously a positive, been encouraging for the ECB uh, and confirmed its assessment. Uh, that the recent slowdown does not consist of an outright risk to imminent recession. So, okay, that's ticked, one, one positive. However, on the flip side, the inflation numbers for May badly disappointed. So the in inflation headline uh, to 1.2% year on year in the core, worse at 0.8. So quite a way away from that 2% goal uh, and by a larger margin than had been anticipated Comments on inflation, those those forecasts will be key. It's pretty much bang on priced in that they are going to lower the 2019 forecast for inflation. So you hear that, I would, I would just brush it under the carpet, move on. What will be interesting is if they are going to lower 2020 as well. Also, what's been uh, quite interesting as well is, is the, the uh, if I bring this in here, the the ECB cut percentage. So not too long ago, we were talking about uh, an interest rate rise in, in equity market, uh, in, in Europe uh, at the, well, they were calling it, what, what is the, the back end of, of summer? So was it gonna be August, October, November, uh, when they were looking to rise rates? Now it's looking like, well, actually in, in uh, July next year, we're gonna be lowering interest rates. So. Yeah, one to to keep an eye on. I think the yeah, who would want to be a central head of central bank at the the moment uh, with obviously the the trade talks all going on and or not going on, uh, sort of weighing on on policy and making it hard. And with Draghi, of course, uh, July, August, September, October, November, five months before he's headed out, it's odds on now that he's not going to raise interest rates. Uh, in his uh, couple of terms that he has done, which is is pretty incredible to to say the least. Um, but that, those inflation forecasts will be certainly one to to keep a a close eye on um, at 12:45 today UK time, and then any comments on that at 1:30. Speaking of trade for for the ECB, obviously talks between the US and China have broken down. As we know, trade war has been intensifying weighed on stocks we have had a slight recovery of course helped by pow but these these comments on on trade will be interesting especially as we've just overnight had the the mexican uh, sort of gap lower on the idea that they're not going to be sparred and there's no deal right there for now um and, and when draggy you know has said risks are moving to the downside uh, regarding the trade he's also uh, list protectionism so this is this is the word for now protectionism and you want a, a, a dictionary definition, well, I've got one right here for you. The theory of practice of shielding a country's domestic industries from foreign competition by taxing imports. So it's all about this now. Uh, what is the situation between the US and Europe? The, uh, the delay on, uh, on tariffs was seen as a positive, albeit briefly, for the markets. We saw a rally in the DAC, we saw a rally in the Euro, only to come back down partly that day but then over the coming days as well um, so the comments based on on what's going on between the US and Europe will will obviously be quite key um, the US has kept its threat uh, to hit the EU with levies on cars and car parts 
Uh, so yeah, it's certainly a, an interesting one. The ECB also has pledged to keep interest rates at uh, current or lower levels until at least the end of 2019. So that really has pushed on. You know, they this is now you know the the hike in or, or, uh, in autumn is of course not priced in whatsoever. And now it looks like the markets are expecting uh, by July next year a rate cut, free rate cuts now expected in the US. Pretty unbelievable, um, you know, new age economics, if you like, where these rates are just so low uh, and the markets can't seem to, to deal with them. Um, so those new forecasts I mentioned, obviously, at 12.30 uh, or well, one thirty, I said you had the opening statement from, from Dragon. Last few ones have been pretty boring. Uh, also worth noting the last few meetings we've either gone higher to come back lower in the press conference on Gordon Lower to come back to pretty much exactly where we were. So the idea that maybe there's going to be a long lasting uh, effect from this press conference or meeting, I would say it is slim, but certainly from an opportunity, it could be a good one to the downside, just considering how we have recovered and the US at the moment is a, seems a, a much more attractive place for an investor than certainly Europe. Um, so those inflation forecasts, as mentioned, will be uh, important to, to keep an eye on. Uh, and if they were to change that, uh, well, downgrade the 2019 outlook expected, but the 2021, and if they're pessimistic on that, the euro certainly uh, will have a bit more more room to, to fall, uh, if you like. Elsewhere uh, in markets, uh, obviously, we've uh, well, we had a couple of comments overnight. Chinese President Xi uh, said the economy is improving and that China has ample room to use policies to deal with risks. Uh, Mnuchin, US Treasury, will meet uh, PBOC Governor Yi Yang at the G20 finance meeting in Japan. So these comments slightly more positive for, for stocks and my, my view on, on US equities and, and equities in general is I, I think we, we do continue to push higher uh, in the short term. I don't necessarily think the the push to all-time highs is again ready just yet but maybe the next week or so we might just have seen a, a shorter term bottom. Um, we'll, we'll obviously remain to, to see uh, how that goes uh, as well but you know, that's just my, my personal view on that. I'd be interested to see what you guys think. Have we seen the, the bottom short-term bottom for stocks or um, have we, uh, you know, or have we seen the bottom and, and we're going back up to, to the highs? Trump uh, was, was in Ireland yesterday as well. I'm sure uh, anyone on Twitter was, was enjoying those comments when he was starting talking about a border wall between Ireland and Northern Ireland in, in typical Trump fashion, going there and he was saying how everything's going to be okay for you guys as well uh, to Ireland. He is now off to, to France. Uh, for the, the 75th anniversary of, of, of D-Day landings. Um, I think ultimately from the, the, the meeting with, with Ireland, more questions that were, were there than, than answers. Uh, also, the, the, I mentioned at the beginning, Theresa May has one day left before standing down and staying in Ossif, overseeing that uh, conservative leadership. Uh, Michael Gove yesterday um, said that he could live with another short delay to the October 31st deadline. Uh, again, another question, what's, um, I've just seen a question there from Andy, wonder what colour tie Draghi will wear today? Well, these are the important questions. Um, but certainly with the October 31st deadline, you know, who, who thinks, and let me know in the, in the chat, Y or N, yes or no, who thinks we will have left Europe, deal or no deal, by 31st of October. Uh, the comments overnight from, from Gove stating that he is you know, not too uh, bothered, uh, if you like, by a, uh, a continuation uh, past that. Uh, the, the rules going forward, we briefly touched upon this yesterday uh, from a good, good tweet from, uh, from Adam Linton at, at Ransquark about the, the leadership race. Uh, race. Uh, the rules here are by uh, candidates need to be nominated by eight members of parliament, a higher bar than previously. Nominations open and closed June the 10th. So expect a lot of movement over the weekend, names in the hat, people back in this person, people back in that person. Um, obviously Boris is, is, is now back to even money, uh, maybe even a bit below now. So 
you've got to be slightly uh, careful about maybe looking to get too short the pound if, if, if it does look like he's going to be the favourite for now as a lot of that is priced in. Uh, I would only be, start looking to, to go heavy short the pound if he steps up his rhetoric on no deal. Uh, conservative lawmakers then vote in a series of secret ballots to knock out the least popular candidates. Sometimes candidates withdraw themselves. That will happen. I think, you know, to save a bit of pride, people might just remove themselves ahead of that. The ballots then continue until a shortlist of two emerges. For, for my betting money, I think that's going to be Gove and I think that's going to be Boris. Uh, I think at the time when uh, we were, when, when Theresa May resigned, I think you know Gove looked good money at ten to one. He's now down to fives. Uh, understandably, Boris is, is still uh, the favourite despite the um, the court order. The final pair then take uh, part in hust hustings around the country from June the twenty second. Uh, the Conservative parties estimated one hundred and sixty thousand members uh, mail in their votes. The process wraps up. Uh, week of July the 22nd we know there's recess in August we know August is a quiet month so you know are they really going to get anything done uh, gives them maybe September to do stuff uh, and then next thing you know it's October and Europe aren't going to change their mind and well maybe we're just about to see just how I'm not going to say good a Theresa May did but how hard it was for her to do uh, anything uh, May obviously remains Prime Minister until the successor is chosen. Um, it's quite interesting as well, so just having a look down, uh, according to a poll, uh, or research I should say, um, 64 uh, of card-carrying Tory members are men, 40% are over the age of 65. Significantly, 86% regarding the leaving the EU as the most important issue facing the country according to the December analysts. So, I mean, this is, you know, quite old and perhaps not worth looking too far into it. But the, the one thing uh, I found quite interesting, two thirds of Conservative members back a no deal exit. Uh, Boris uh, has, you know, been been leading this race for the main most part of it. Gove as well, as, as, as said previously, he likes the idea of this no deal, which brings us back onto to the pound. and in my opinion despite you know if we have a look certainly at the the recent trend of of may you know the top of the may here 132 you know we have come down a fair whack and that is you know the uncertainty that is perhaps boris as well i do think if he was to step up that that rhetoric uh, of the no deal and, and be very bullish and hawkish in that talk then we do have uh, have a bit more room to come down and uh, unfortunately, and you know, I'm uh, a longer term pound bull, if you like, I think we could get down to 122 quite sharpish. But for now, those uh, those trend lines we've talked about in, in previous times and the, the previous low from, uh, you know, the, when was it, 2017s, yeah, uh, have held pretty, pretty good. Uh, and if anything, well, it's just in a range, right? Well, a weekly range going back from uh, 17th of September last year to the double bottom now and the double top as well so from here technically we go higher hopefully um, as I'm off holiday uh, tomorrow uh, but any questions as, as usual guys please you know do let me know just having a, a quick look at, at, the, at the calendar uh, and just for, for the guys watching you know this later on um, one two three four the majority of people are saying we will not get uh, a deal done by 31st of October and I think that resembles as well a bit of the market pricing in that and the uncertainty which markets obviously hate. Uh, just going back to, to the calendar having a look here we have the GDP revised figures from uh, from Europe not expecting in any way a reaction from that. One because it's revisions, two because you had the ECB at 12.45, press conference 1.30 uh, as well. Weekly initial jobless claims also at the, the same time as the press conference very rarely is going to move the market anyway, but obviously focus is going to be on Draghi's opening statements from then. Uh, as we go into the back end of the afternoon or the back end of the morning, uh, we've got Carney speaking, obviously Draghi as we mentioned 1.30, uh, Kaplan the non-voter at 1.40 before Feds Williams at 6 o'clock. 
there's been some decent opportunities in the market following Fed comments. So just be uh, close watching those times uh, and any positions that you do have, uh, as it could, of course, uh, be uh, to, to the detriment to, to not have that risk management uh, in place. But I hope you all have a, a good trading day. We'll obviously be on the mic closer to the ECB, uh, but I hope you'll have a, a good day ahead.